like the feature version of you cannot wait to meet you like right here like you can't see them but they can see you and i see patrick constantly seeing that version of himself talking to himself because i'm not going to operate in fear and doubt patrick calls me on thanksgiving hey sapala happy thanksgiving hey patrick sapala there's a lady she's coming into the gym she had uh, she had a walker apparently she got into a bad accident she's trying to rehab herself uh put her membership on my tab and on top of that i want you to train her twice a week can you do it for the next six months? I can do it for the next six months. Are you sure? Don't tell it for me though. Here's one thing I want you to do, Zay. I want you to say, God loves you. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jeter. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. So here's some, here's some things I learned from PBD. If you want mentorship in your life, which I think is a very, very important thing, when you're looking at, when you're looking at your role of mentorship, what's, what's a mentor supposed to do in your life? What, what will a mentor do in your life? You think a mentor is supposed to say, hey, it's okay. It's okay to have low standards. It's all right if you really value mentorship. Because some of you don't even know it. You're playing the role of mentor to somebody who's watching you right now. And because of your level, they're going to play at a lower level. They don't even tell you. Like, people are silently watching you right now because you decided to make this bold move into entrepreneurship. So if, if, there's, one, if there's one thing I learned from PBD, here's, here's three things I learned from PBD to help you with, with uh, understanding our business, our culture, our company, your future is number one, Patrick is massively data-driven. He's, he's data-driven. He's a people-driven. Every time, every time he's coaching us and, and consulting us, it's data, 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 data. Why do you think the company put $3 million into this thing called Bamboo? So therefore, not only can Patrick have data, but you can have data. Because we want you to have analytics about your performance. Because you might have your opinion about how you perform, correct? And is that opinion biased? Yes. Is that the, the opinion naturally defensive because it's you? Yes. Of course it is, right? But what will data naturally reveal? The truth. You have your opinion, I have my opinion, the numbers then have its real opinion. So Patrick has been data driven and it allows him to drive uh, a lot of people. So how often do you monitor your numbers though? Of course you gotta ask yourself, how often do you monitor your numbers? How many guys say you check bamboo at least five times a day? <laughs> 20 times a day. More, more than damn IG, right? Because the damn thing updates all the time. So every day, are you monitoring your business to make sure your business advances? If not, then your life will slowly start to change, if at all. The more you're on top of your numbers, you look up, how many times you watch, 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 the, uh, watch the pro players, NBA, NFL, watch these guys play. Usually when these guys shoot, either they're getting back on defense or looking at the, they're looking at the jumbotron. They're not looking at the jumbotron for vanity either. They're looking for air, key plays. You guys remember when Devin Hester caught the, uh, the kickoff from uh, the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl? First play, first play. First play, right? First play. I think the first, first kickoff to run back for a touchdown in the Super Bowl, right? First kickoff, first play ever to run back a kickoff, opening kickoff for a touchdown, Devin Hester. So he caught the ball. Did you see him looking at the jumbotron towards the end? Why was he, why was he looking at the jumbotron? So he's trailing him. He wasn't trying to say, oh, I'm a touchdown, I'm a vanity, oh, my hair looks good, you know, uniform looks good, right? He's looking for the angle to cut. So instead of looking over his shoulder, which slows down his, his pace, he's looking at the jumbotron. So these players learn to use the jumbotron as their another set of eyes on the field. So what's your set of eyes when you're monitoring your business? See, pe people wonder what sets Patrick differently from a lot of CEOs. He's data driven. You gotta be driven by your data. Th this allow you to identify your trends. And by the way, some of you guys don't need data to identify your trends. <laughs> you know whether or not you put money and time into the business. So data, understanding your data will identify your trends. So ask yourself, well, Matt, I'm not an MD yet. You don't have to be an MD to identify your trends. Ask yourself, if you look, look back on your calendar, how many things in your calendar right now are on your calendar that are business related and not business related? Well, 60% is based on holiday, you know, 10% is based on me time, and the other, you know, the other 40% the business. Well, that's, that's why you're getting what you're getting. So every day you have to do something data-wise that says I'm advancing my business forward. Otherwise, you're, listening, you're losing out on a day. So when you're, when you're, when you're looking, at your, looking at your numbers, also consider this too as well. Um, 
here's, here's what I've seen Patrick do it, 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 it results to this. He's got, based on numbers, he either applies patience or urgency. Patience or urgency. Because part of this data is also understanding people. How many of you guys have heard of the, uh, the STAR training? The, the personality types? S stands for? T stands for? A stands for? R stands for? Okay. So understanding this data, how you communicate to the people is based on their language and personality type. Okay, so let's say, let's say uh, you're not getting through to somebody, you're not getting a breakthrough. You have to ask yourself, okay, what language do they speak? Are they, are they data driven? Are they, what, what is T? Are they technical? What's A? Action or are they relationship? Because you might be speaking French to them, they speak Spanish and you're yelling at them, they don't understand half the words are coming out your mouth. Second thing that uh, Patrick has guided me to in terms of having a relationship with a mentor. Second thing, Patrick is unreasonable in lowering standards. He's unreasonable when it comes to raising standards too. What am I talking about? He's unreasonable when it comes to leadership development. You have to develop your people. Before you develop other people, who do you need to develop? Yourself. Yourself. Okay. Do I have to force that upon you or are you going to be feeling empowered to do that? Okay. You got to grow yourself. There was, there's a young lady, she's telling me right now, I want to help so many people. I want to help you. Great. For a minute, I'm going to give you permission. Everybody here, I'm going to give you permission if, you want, if you're willing to take it. I'm going to give you permission for a small pocket of time while you're helping get this business off out the ground to start being a little selfish because you can't give what you don't have. If you, if you want to serve other people, you have to develop you. What would you rather give out, handouts or hand ups? Would you rather, would you rather give, five, oh, hey, I, don't, I can only spare five or ten dollars. You know, here, here, here's, here's Here's some cool things I'm doing. And uh, I, Ivan, uh, Ivan's uh, going to help me do this. So one of the things I, li I like to do, like, for example, I was in a men's warehouse. And uh, because I focused on building me, right, I, I'm able to build a business. And I noticed in a men's warehouse, uh, this uh, single mom and her son uh, looking for shoes. He's getting ready for school. And, Mom, I really want these, though. But, yeah, mijo. Yeah. But, Mom, mijo, listen. Trying to budget. I, I taught sales, so, hey, whatever, whatever they're buying, the whole entire thing, whatever they're buying, put it on my tab. But don't tell it's me, though. Don't tell it's me. Are you sure? Yeah, tell me. And, and, and I just wanted to see what the look on their face was when they, when they got out of the men's warehouse. There's a lady, she's coming into the gym. She had a, she had a walker. Apparently, she got into a bad accident. She's trying to rehab herself. And, uh, and uh, I told her trainer. I said, hey, hey RJ, come here. Uh, put her membership on my tab. And on top of that, I want you to train her twice a week. Can you do that for the next six months? I can do it for the next six months. Are you sure? Don't tell it for me, though. Here's one thing I want you to do today. I want you to say, God loves you. That's why I want to, don't, don't, don't say it's for me, because I don't want to be walking out right next to her. I don't want to feel awkward. Thank you for the membership. I don't want, I want that, no. No, I don't want to feel awkward. You just tell her, God loves you, okay? And then she's on there and says, bro, she's like constantly in the gym. She's constantly in the gym, constantly working out, right? So we'll see, see what happens, how they work out. But that, that's, that comes from leadership development. I economically fix myself first before I can give. I tell my line, hey, babe, uh, you pass your license, get your social promotion, you go shopping. Right? And we, we go to Oak Brook Mall. Here's, here's my daughter. Hey, babe, you like this dress? <laughs> no. You sure you don't like this dress? No. We go, to, we go to Zara, Poppy, there's nothing really here. Cool. Got the whole entire time. The last thing I'm not worried about is what? Because she did her part, I, I, need, I need to do my part. It's, co it's constantly with inside her family. And there's a lot more in store for that, the more she continues to grow and progress. And so how you do that is by building you. Leadership development. Second thing I see Patrick unreasonable about is running systems. It's all based on systems. Why? Systems keeps you from having to think. 
Systems keeps you from having to be over emotional about a scenario. When you put up, back to number one, once you show data and you, you know the system to increase the data, improve the data, you're no longer emotional about it. Third thing about here, about being unreasonable, is Patrick is always looking for cause, effect. Okay, certain things happen, what's the cause of it? We didn't get our outcome today, what was the cause of it? Hey, uh, we, we sh fell short of our goal, what's the cause of it? We didn't make budget, what's the cause of it? Oh, we did make budget, oh, we, are, we surpassed our goals, what was the cause of it? Okay, let's do more of that. So there's always cause and effect in your life. When there's a push, there's a pull, okay? When there's a yin, there's a yang, right? There's a, always a cause and effect. Okay, last thing i share with you guys. Third thing, where I see Patrick in my relationship with him, okay? His love for America. His love for capitalism. He made an analogy one time. He said, if you were going to judge America like a restaurant, how many guys go to like a, your favorite Sunday morning breakfast spot, right? And there, there's a line, right? And they, they take your name, and what do they tell you? How long is the wait? 30 minutes. And what do you do? You, because it, it's worth it. Because, right, you're willing to wait 30 minutes of your time, chit-chat, whatever, until they call you to, to be seated. So if America was like a restaurant, America's got the restaurant with the longest waiting line of people waiting to get in. Because they realize the American dream is worth it. And oftentimes, so what, how does that translate to your business? Oftentimes, you get too logical with your business. You're not, you're not emotional enough. Like, Patrick's always jacked up. You ever talk to Patrick? He's always got his next, his next, his next. And it always blows your mind with the things he's thinking about next, next, next. Are you that way with your team? Are you that way with your organization? Are you that way with your family? Oh, you're just a dreamer. I know. I know I'm a dreamer. I'm the only dreamer in our family. I'm the only dreamer around here. I'm the only dreamer here around Thanksgiving. I'm the only dreamer here during the holiday season. Why? Are you happy where we're at, fam? No. Now, how come I can't dream? Everybody else is living a life. How come we're not living a life? And I'm unreasonable for you to tell me not to dream that way. Because when you see the love that you have for your business, you're no longer logical. Now, the logic and that will drive you. But emotions will keep you. Because you know why? Because we fell in love what we're about to become. Yeah, that's right. come on. Come on. And I hope you guys can fall in love with that future version of yourself. Yeah. Like, you got to understand, man, this, this is what's happening in your, in, in, your, in your future. Here's what's happening. Yo, hey. Marcus, what's up? Who's that? It's me. It's the richer version of you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Marcus, you got a girl, right? Yeah. You want to provide her the world? Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, man, keep with it. Keep with it. Don't doubt. Don't step back. Keep making phone calls. Bro, I'm telling you right now, it's worth this lifestyle you're going to provide for her? Oh, my gosh. With Shen An? It's awesome, man. <laughs> the ring you're about to provide her, the vacation you're taking her, man, the private jet you're doing. Man, the car that you're going to provide, you're going to surprise her on this? Bro, the gym you're going to buy her because I know she likes to work out? Bro. <laughs> He's like, damn, I got to get a ring now. <laughs> and your future version is like, Marcus, dude, I got the ring for you, bro. That's the conversation I'm having. Like the future version of you cannot wait to meet you. <laughs> like right here, like you can't see them, but they can see you. And I see Patrick constantly seeing that version of himself, talking to himself. Last thing I'll share with you guys before I let you go. Anyone can go anywhere and become anything. That's what Patrick's crusade is all about. What's your crusade? What's your 2022 going to be all about? Matt, this is what we do, sell insurance? Yeah, that's what we do, but it's not who we are. You know, what's the difference between a, an Apple and a Dell? You know, both of them had a chance to sell MP3 players all at the same time, right? But, but why, did, why did Dell not be the prominent? They were the first to have it, by the way. Why, why, did, Dell, why did Dell not be the, the premier company to sell MP3 players? And they were the first one to market with it. Because here's how they sold it. They said, hey, man, 
You can have an MP3 player, cut loose your CDs, cut loose your ju the, those jewel boxes that we love to collect. Get rid of your CDs, and you can store 35,000 songs on it. You want to buy it? Like, bro, I don't even know 35,000 songs. <laughs> right. right? But how did Apple sell an MP3 player? Yo, dog, you put these white headphones on? It's a lifestyle. You're going to be dancing at it. You're going to have, you're going to have everybody asking you about it. You're going to be the guy with the it, the it product. You're going to be sitting there telling your family and your friends. You're going to have something that everybody wants. Everybody wants to be, I'm selling you this experience in your life. Now do you want it? And what was it called? iPod. 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 So they had, the Dell had the MP3 player first. But who became the pr prominent player when it came to MP3 players? Apple. Apple, because they sold why you need to buy it. Dell got too damn logical about it. Sometimes people don't get promotion because you're too damn logical about it. And when you get too logical about things, here's what sets in, fear. Fear sets in. Let me, let, me, let, me, uh, let, me sh let me let me share with you one last thing that uh, uh, that Will Smith had said. How many guys watched that movie um, with his son, Jaden? After, uh, after, after Earth. Was it After Dark or After, after Earth? After Earth. Okay. He says this: Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not present and may not ever ever exist. And that is near insanity. Do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. We're all telling ourselves a story, and that day, when I told myself the story of fear, that day, my life changed.